biggest competition for audiences here at the museum really isn't other cultural institutions, it's the beach. And so here, you get a little bit of both worlds at the same time. I think when visitors walk through this building, whether they could articulate it or not, they recognize that they're having an unusual experience of a museum that is really married to an experience of the, the beautiful environment here. It's three floors of enclosed space, elevated above the park and the bay. The first floor is wrapped with a huge outdoor terrace. The entire facility is capped with an enormous uh, louvered roof that protects the deck and the contents of the building from the elements. It invites gathering outside. It invites people to experience the environment, but from a kind of protected vantage point. All around the perimeter of the building are uh, some 70 vertical gardens, hanging hydroponic gardens, that uh, when they're fully grown in, get to about three feet in diameter, three and a half feet in diameter with flowering plants and vines and uh, all kinds of tropical vegetation. And they create a kind of green screen. It's a nice way to transition from the park into the building. Pam has only been collecting since the latter part of the 1990s. We're a young institution, but we understand what stories we want to be able to tell with our permanent collection. And we also are part of a, an extremely robust uh, collecting ecosystem here in Miami. There are other museums that collect, with which we have very collegial relationships, and many, many tremendous private collectors uh, that loan and with whom we do collaborative work and so forth. So we really are able to take advantage of this ecosystem to tell very fleshed out stories. We're really at the center of a very interesting matrix. We're at an interesting place between North and South. We have a very unusual relationship to both North America and South America and the Caribbean. And we want to take advantage of the fact that we're central to that matrix of cultural and material exchange by organizing exhibitions and growing collections that really reflect the diversity of this place. The diverse demographics of Miami are an index for everything we do in terms of building our collection and organizing our exhibition programs over time. We're opening with five exhibitions and four commissioned artist projects. And I think if you look at the balance of those programs, it's, uh, it's apparent that our, we're, our programs are international in scope. We have the Ai Weiwei retrospective, for example. But we also, of course, have a very heavy interest in Latin American art, and we have very strong collections in Latin American art, so that has a big presence in what we do. And then we're also interested in bringing artists from other parts of the world into Miami and setting them in dialogue with the art artist community and other parts of the Miami community to produce new works for these spaces in the building that are dedicated to artist commission. The idea, of course, is that every different kind of exhibition space we have here, from our smallest spaces, which are for these commissioned artist projects, to our biggest galleries, which are really the places in which we present these huge survey exhibitions and exhibitions that have a very sort of broad historical uh, purview. All of those spaces will change, though the exhibitions in them will rotate on different schedules with the idea that anytime one visited from month to month, there would always be something new to experience here in the museum. Maybe it's the nature of Miami, the dynamic nature of Miami, I'm a city that's really about progress and the new, but I think that we are really in a place where we understand this as the beginning of something and not the end of something. And that's a great feeling to be inaugurating the building with that kind of ethos.